You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Hey guys, back with another Borderlands 2 countdown, and today I wanted to go over 10 of what I think are some of the worst red text guns and weapons to farm in Borderlands 2. Now, like last time, we're going to be going over weapons that drop from enemies either during or after specific quests are completed. Uh, these are different from quest reward weapons that require you to complete a specific quest. So, I guess as an example, the buffalo is a quest reward weapon, while the elephant gun is not. Unlike last time, I figured we could do something a little different and talk about how I would improve some of these weapons. Now, some of these weapons were fixed by some community patch mods, however, I figured I'd give my two cents on potential fixes for some of these guns. At the very least, I would consider the vast majority of the weapons on this list ripe for some custom replacement mods if that's something that you're interested in. After all, I think if half of these guns disappeared, I don't think anyone would be too upset. So, without further ado, these will be the top 10 worst red text guns and weapons to farm in Borderlands 2. Buckle my shoe. Number 10, the Cobra. Okay, so I know there are plenty of people out there that really like the Cobra sniper rifle. However, in my opinion, I think the Cobra is simply too rare for what it is and what it does. I also feel that you're limited to the types of buffs you can receive since this game considers the Cobra to be a non-elemental weapon as opposed to a truly explosive sniper rifle. Despite the fact that the Cobra deals explosive damage, its damage is boosted by only sniper rifle type damage bonus bonuses as opposed to explosive damage or grenade damage bonus. I'd attribute this mostly to the way the Cobra has been coded into the game since it's not actually a Torg sniper rifle and is instead a Jacob sniper rifle. My other issue with this particular weapon is simply its rarity. Now, I do know that the Cobra's drop rate was increased thanks to Gearbox's patch for the game in late 2015. However, I still don't think it would be fun to try and farm for this. As you all probably know, the Cobra drops from Pete's burners, so a good place to farm for this thing would be the beatdown from the Torg DLC. But when you consider what you're ultimately getting, and when you consider that other weapons like the Lyuda and the Pipernal are easier to get, uh, you should probably skip the Cobra. Number 9. The Commerce. So this is a really cool SMG that just becomes statistically obsolete once you reach higher level difficulties and after you've found some other blue or purple rarity Hyperion SMGs. Now, this gun is acquired by killing Assassin Watt, which is one of the assassins from the Assassinate the Assassin side quest mission, and you can either kill them during that mission or after that mission to get your very own Commerce SMG. The Commerce's situation is really unfortunate because it's a really cool looking gun, especially when it gleams as you travel through various areas with all sorts of different types of lighting. And really, to improve this gun, I'd say you could probably just marginally improve all of its stats. Maybe increase damage, improve the speed at which you achieve maximum accuracy, and maybe increase the reload speed a little bit. Uh, otherwise, there's not really a whole lot else to say about the Commerce. It's just a fairly unremarkable weapon that could greatly benefit from being made remarkable. Number 8, the Hydra. Now, this gun may be one of the more controversial weapons on this list, but I simply can't stand the Hydra. For those of you that don't know, the Hydra was a weapon that appeared in the very first Borderlands as a legendary shotgun, and it ultimately returned to Borderlands 2 as a red text unique weapon that's acquired from Rouge, a red crystal disc that you can fight during or after the big feat side quest in the Hammerlock DLC. Like in the last Borderlands, the Hydra's projectile pattern is just retarded, or should I say, mentally deficient. The projectile pattern splits up each of the individual pellets into five groupings oriented in a horizontal line. This makes it extremely difficult to use effectively, and to make matters worse, the Hydra has an amazing projectile count for a Jacob shotgun. You're getting 22 projectiles with the vertical attachment, and without, you're getting 20. The most obvious way to improve this gun is to simply remove the god-awful projectile pattern. Horizontal projectile patterns limit your ability to do a crap ton of damage, and it would be nice if you could get all of that damage potential into a smaller, more confined space. Now, I know some people may like this gun, I just wish it had a better projectile pattern. Number 7, Gwen's Head. 
So Gwen's head is a flawed pistol because its special effect boosts gun damage and magazine size. However, that's counteracted by the Hyperion pistol barrel, which reduces weapon damage and magazine size while boosting critical hit damage, and the TDR grip, which also reduces weapon damage and magazine size while it boosts reload speed. While I can understand why you can't change the Hyperion Barrel, I don't understand why the Gwen's head requires the TDR grip. To be honest, the lack of having any grip is what bothers me the most, since the ability to spawn with either a Jacobs or a Torg grip could offset some of the damage loss. Or at least with a Dahl or Vladoff grip, you're getting better recoil or fire rate respectively. It's bizarre because the Gwen's head actually has critical hit bonus that's on par with the Jacob's pistol and could come in any element. If the damage matched that of what you might find on a Jacob's pistol, the Gwen's head might actually be worth having. It's also kind of a pain to get this gun as you'll need to randomly find a spawning box that can appear throughout the dust. Of course, this is a reference to the movie 7 with Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Um, I'll leave a link in the description that goes over the locations more in depth, but what I will say is that I prefer the spawn at Ellie's Garage or the one near Lynchwood Station. Number 6, The Chopper. This gun was simply a missed opportunity. It exists in the original Borderlands, and in my opinion, it was actually a fairly decent gun in that game. Granted, it wasn't one of the best guns or weapons ever in Borderlands 1, but when I used the chopper in Borderlands 1, I don't think I ever really felt like I wanted to slit my own wrists. The chopper in Borderlands 2 is really a travesty, as I feel like it had the potential to be this awesome Death Star laser type weapon, but ultimately it turned out to being a piece of crap. Uh, when it comes to the positives though, you're getting ridiculous magazine size, high fire rate, and a times 4 projectile multiplier. And it's also nice that you can stop this gun from firing by either throwing a grenade or by performing a melee attack. That way you aren't wasting as much ammo. However, the problems are numerous. While you do get a times 4 projectile multiplier, you're firing 6 bullets just to shoot 4. I don't even know how that works. This wouldn't be so bad if the chopper had massive base damage before the multiplier, and unfortunately, it doesn't. When you combine this with low accuracy and the fact that you will waste some bullets every time you pull the trigger, the chopper becomes very difficult and very expensive to use effectively. What would make the chopper better is if there was some way for it to regenerate ammo. That and you could increase the base damage while decreasing ammo consumption. That way you wouldn't be punished quite as much if you missed your shots with this gun. If you want a chopper, you'll need to kill Dexiduous the Invincible for one in the Hammerlock DLC. Is it worth it? Hell no. And honestly, it sucks because the chopper from Borderlands 1 was pretty cool. Number 5, the Rex. Guys, I hate this gun, along with the damn cowboy assault rifle, with a passion. In fact, to best describe how I feel about this gun, I think it's important that I simply say, what a boatload of ass! The Rex is a Jacobs pistol that doesn't fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. And while I get that the developers for the Hammerlock DLC intended on making a hand cannon, the problem is that they reduced fire rate and boosted base damage. If anything, fire rate shouldn't have even been touched as a means to preserve this weapon's damage per second potential. If you fire a shot with the Rex and miss, you are screwed. The same thing goes for the damned Cowboy Assault Rifle as well, but both of these guns simply lack the fire rate that you really need to make them practical. I'd rather be shooting the crap out of an enemy instead of waiting for my friggin' gun to let me fire again. The other thing that's important to mention too is that maximizing damage per shot in Borderlands 2 doesn't work well because of the enemy health scaling and damage resistance on higher level difficulties. So firing more shots and building up higher DPS is usually far more effective. Fixing this gun should be pretty easy though. Uh, simply removing the fire rate cap and giving it a times two projectile multiplier and then maybe a times four projectile multiplier for the two for or double prefix version would make the Rex amazing. I guess if you still want a Rex, you can get a Rex from Bullstoss during or after you have completed the and acquired taste side quest 
in the Hammerlock DLC. Number four, the Elephant Gun. So the Elephant Gun is one of the best looking but horrible sniper rifles in this game. Without a doubt, the biggest issue with this sniper rifle is its accuracy in combination with its lack of a scope. Scopeless sniper rifles like the Buffalo aren't too difficult to use since you're at least getting decent accuracy as well as some iron sights. The problem with the elephant gun is that you're getting inferior accuracy and no iron sights since it's using the Hyperion sniper rifle barrel. Like a few of the other hammerlock weapons, the elephant gun is getting reduced fire rates to improve overall base damage. Assuming you can hit what you're shooting at, you'll find that you're better off having lower base damage and higher fire rate for better DPS. A great example of this for snipers is the Jacob's Diop, which has lower base damage, however it's got better fire rate, and skilled sniper players can lay down more accurate shots for better DPS. With the elephant gun, you have to maximize the effectiveness of a single shot, which is much harder to do and is less viable in higher difficulties. I think the main things that would fix the elephant gun would be to simply increase the fire rate, increase the accuracy, and to possibly even get this weapon to spawn with a scope, even though it may break with the tradition of the elephant gun from Borderlands 1. If you want an elephant gun, you can acquire one from Arizona during or after you've completed the egg on your face side quest from the Hammerlock DLC. Number three, the stink pot. Stink pot, more like stinks a lot. Probably just made somebody cringe there, uh, my bad, but anyway. My theory as to why the stink pot is bad is that it just has too much recoil. That, and since it's a grenadier type weapon, the grenade projectiles make it harder to predict where the projectiles are going to go. After all, you figure that most other Jacob's assault rifles have pretty straightforward projectile patterns, and the bullets typically go where you aim. Another issue is that despite the high base damage, you're getting a Jacob's weapon that doesn't have the ability to crit. The fact that the stink pot can't crit is ass backwards, considering the fact that one of the main reasons you would pick a Jacob's weapon is for its boost to critical hit bonus. Usually, most assault rifles get something like 1.67 times damage multiplier on a crit, where Jacob's assault rifles get about two times damage on criticals. Keep in mind that the formula for critical hit damage is more complex than that, but usually that seems to be the general trend between Jacob's assault rifles versus assault rifles from other manufacturers. What I do think is funny is that it seems like the stink pot was hidden from the vast majority of the Borderlands 2 player base. In a similar situation to what we've seen in the pre-sequel, the stink pot only drops from a specific boss that isn't refarmable. That means in order to get a stink pot legitimately, you have to get lucky and have one drop from no beard at the very beginning of the Captain Scarlet DLC. Or you have to reset your playthrough on UVA Shaman up. Turning the stink pot into a Gatling stink pot would improvement, or even changing the weapon barrel to something that can crit would greatly help this gun. And there are some cool mods out there that improve this gun, and kudos to those modders for doing that. Number two, the lightning bolt. Okay, so the Chain Lightning Legendary Grenade mod is actually really awesome, and if you can get your hands on one of those and use it on any character, I think you're going to find that it is quite effective since it basically does all of the work for you. However, the Red Text Unique version, that is also the entry level version, the Lightning Bolt, is the absolute pits. The only positive aspect of the Lightning Bolt is that it can regenerate grenade ammo. Otherwise, don't use this thing. And the main thing is that it's just simply too difficult to use. Unlike the Chain Lightning, which a three-year-old could operate, the Lightning Bolt requires precise aiming to hit the enemy. Now, if this was on a gun, it would work. However, since it's on a grenade, it's much more difficult to predict where the bolt itself is going to go. You've got to wonder if the Lightning Bolt was sort of an afterthought by the developers. Perhaps somebody at Gearbox made the Chain Lightning and thought it was awesome. So they decided to make a lesser version to complement it in the form of the lightning bolt grenade. Honestly, I'm not sure how you would improve this since the chain lightning is the better version. Maybe if you gave it bigger blast radius, it could be more practical, but even then I'd still rather use the chain lightning. That said, if you do want one of these, you can get them to drop from either sorcerers or necromancers in the dragon keep DLC. Number one, the pot of gold. 
All right, so again, I know the Pot of Gold is a shield, but I think it's a great candidate for being one of the worst red text unique items that you can farm for in Borderlands 2. Or should I say save Scum 4, since Peter Safford, who is the mini boss that drops the Pot of Gold, only drops the shield during the Clan War End of the Rainbow side quest. This just seems like another one of those items that Gearbox hid from the player base because it wasn't as good as it could be. Now honestly, the entire situation is just depressing because the pot of gold is actually a really cool concept for a shield. While it may not have ideal stats, the pot of gold does have a chance to drop some money from time to time upon taking damage. And this is actually a really cool feature since you're going to be taking damage quite frequently as you play and having the ability to quickly build up a stack of cash is pretty neat. Unfortunately, the rate at which you gain money is extremely low, mostly because the percentage chance to drop money is so low, and even if you get the pot of gold to drop money, it's such an infinitesimal amount of cash that it's not practical. I'm not really sure how you would improve this one. Uh, maybe if there was a way to get the percentage chance to drop money to increase, or maybe if there was a way to increase the actual amount of money dropped, that would make the pot of gold better. But as it is right now, it's not even worth farming for this thing. All right, guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like and let me know, what do you think is the worst red text gun, weapon, or item in Borderlands 2? Leave it down in the comments, but as always, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.